Hello everybody, my name is Steve Nye, and I am the builder of the Christmas organ. Uh, that is a dubious distinction, I know. Uh, just yesterday, I uploaded audio of the organ to YouTube, and that'll probably be my last video for a while. I have some serious real-life things to deal with in the next few months, but before I disappeared, I wanted to share some knowledge with you, some knowledge that I've gained during the course of the project. Um, you know, going a lot, uh, going um, onto uh, YouTube or other uh, hobbyist sites, I see a lot of people asking the question, how do I construct a flue pipe, or why does my flue pipe not work? And uh, once you understand what's going on, uh, it's really quite easy to construct a flue pipe out of anything. Uh, the most important mechanism, of course, is the flue mechanism. And so the flue is nothing more than a slit. You don't, it's hard to see here. It's a very thin slit. And it admits air. Um, and it directs it against the edge of a resonating chamber, this here, which is known as the upper lip. Now, the flue pipe is an ingenious machine, and it is it is that because the only moving part is the air that is the product that, that constitutes the sound that a flue pipe makes. Um, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a former uh, electrical engineer, and so I think of the flue mechanism as, a, as kind of a, a transistor, a transistor, um, and the reason being that um, this mechanism allows a small current of air to control a large one. Um, you have air coming up through here, and once you have the standing wave set up, the standing wave vibrations in the pipe, the portion of the wave that issues from the mouth is a very small current, but it has the uh, power to deflect the flue, uh, the, the wind sheet that is coming out of the flue and deflect it in and out of the pipe. And in so doing, it, um, it reinforces the vibration that has been set up inside the length of the pipe. Um, now, if you've taken a look at my Christmas organ, um, you'll see that uh, in that project I use PVC for my pipes. Uh, and if you check my site, uh, I'll, I'll explain why. Um, one of the reasons, of course, is that, you know, when you're working uh, with two-foot to four-foot pipes, it's kind of, uh, you want a durable material to make your pipes out of. But for high octaves, when your pipes are only a few inches long, um, you know, making a pipe completely out of cardboard, such as this, is completely feasible. Um, so yes, here I have chosen to demonstrate flue pipe making with cardboard. This pipe is 100% cereal box, well, with a little bit of glue. Now, following the method by which metal pipes are made, there are three parts to the construction. There's the foot, the languid, and the, um, and the body of the pipe. Um, now, in this pipe, we use a rectangular prism of cardboard for the foot. This is nothing else than a re rectangle of cardboard that is scored and folded into a tube, for a four-sided tube. Now, there are two caveats um, that, you must, that you should follow when you're making this part. First is that the side that forms the flue should be as straight as possible. Um, there should, it should not bow outward, as you see here. So, um, in order to rectify this, you may need to glue an extra reinforcing piece of cardboard right up against the edge that will form the, 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 the flue. Now, also, the side forming the flue should be higher than the other three sides, this side, right, higher than these three sides by a tiny amount equal to the thickness of the cardboard. Reason being that after you cap those three sides with the languid, you want the surface that is presented to be flush. Um, if you do not do this, your pipe will still work, but the, uh, the wind sheet, the jet of air that comes out of the flue, will not go straight up. For instance, if you made all four sides the same and then you capped the languid, you see that you would uh, that you wouldn't have a flush surface, and air would want to come out maybe at a 45 degree angle. However, if you make it completely flush, air will want to come out straight. Now, even if your air doesn't come out straight, that's fine with this method because um, because the top isn't glued on until the end, and so you can just kind of adjust the body and upper lip to match. Um, you know, just put a little hot horizontal offset here. However, that's suboptimal. I didn't realize this while I was making my organ, uh, or until I was halfway done with creating the feet for my organ. Uh, so you will see varying amounts of horizontal offset if you look carefully at the pictures to offset, uh, to, to, to um, account for this variability between my pipes.
I guess the third caveat with making the the foot is that you you know when you're making this surface that's going to form the flue, you want to cut straight and with good scissors. It's important to leave a nice clean sharp cut. Now the rest is easy once you've done this. Um, you just glue a languid, glue this square of cardboard uh, over the upper end of the foot, and you want to make sure you want to leave room for a fine slit, uh, otherwise known as the flue. Uh, now for the body you want to cut, score, and fold a tube that is similar to what you did before for the foot. Now you just cut and fold. Of course, one side needs to have the mouth, and of course, the edge of the mouth, the upper lip, needs to be cut straight and with good scissors. Now the thickness of the flue, I should point this out, the flue, which you can, can barely be seen right there, and the height of the mouth are mathematically dependent on how hard you want to blow into the pipe without the pipe overblowing. In other words, dependent on the pressure and the velocity of the air. Um, there is a equation, uh, there's an equation known as the icing equation, I-S-I-N-G, uh, and if you want to study it and uh, um, make your conclusions, um, you should go and look that up. However, for a casual builder, um, experimentation should tell you everything you need to know. So I guess I should demonstrate this. So this is uh, voiced for pretty low pressure. There you go. Now, you heard some variability in the, in the tone, and I'll tell you that I tested this on, on, the wind, uh, on, the, on the wind chest of my Christmas organ, and it produces a nice steady tone. Um, and again, and of course it's easy to overblow. And while I'm, while I'm here, I might as well demonstrate the effect of a closed pipe. Um, well, that's it. I hope this uh, enables you to experiment, have fun, and create your own super lightweight organ on a budget. Um, I'll give you guys a challenge, I suppose, to build an organ entirely out of cardboard, cereal box cardboard. Uh, that means keys, action, uh, and all, everything except for your blower. Or maybe even, you know, make, make some bellows out of cardboard. Uh, so, have fun. That's it.